Hello and welcome back to the Exein stage. The following talk. So welcome back to the uh, Lichtung stage and Exein. So I ha have a have a weird uh, a double role here because the following talk uh, is also done by me. So let's do the organization stuff here. You can uh, ask questions for the following talk on Twitter under the uh, with, with the hashtag RC3 Exein or in the uh, corresponding uh, um, IRC channel here. So now I'm switching to my role as Karl from Zerforschung and Lilith. So what is Zerforschung? So Zerforschung is a collective of a couple of young people, well, less than 10 right now. It's a bit hard to define. And in the past year, uh, we found together uh, this with all, all over Germany and communicated with other, other uh, sig signal on big blood chain and we started from interest to have a look at, at uh, Tech. And since we started this, we found, uh, uh, found vulnerability and vulnerability and vulnerability. And in this talk today, we want to talk what we would like to know for one year ago before all of that. So, and now, should I say something? Hi, I'm Linus from Chaos Computer Club. And the Chaos Computer Club is a um, society of, of hackers, one of the largest, if not even the largest one in Europe. And maybe some of you have heard of it. And we find we are looking for vulnerabilities and report vulnerabilities for quite a while, quite more than one year, actually. And so we had we helped them, supported them and um, uh, talk to them, and in this talk, we not only want to talk about what the what uh, what reports to you, how to report vulnerabilities, but also how to react to a vulnerability. Because one thing I noticed is that in, I got the impression that certain companies improved their reaction over time, but this year they are uh, they some of them really reacted in a really, really bad way. So that was one to talk about in this talk here. So the whole talk here, we will refer to uh, several papers or other uh, uh, information of interest. So we created a um, link list, which you find under rc3.zerforschung.org. And after the talk, we will have a complete, uh, complete script on that page here. So, so um, let's start right now. So the so the um, uh, the following movie will be um, created durch, uh, by Cringe Placement. Wow, this is all data, all personal data from the Cars Cat community. And Linus is there as well. Hey, Carl, should I Twitter this? Huh? Should I Twitter this? I don't know. Okay, I'll just do it. Hey. I'll tag Linutifer. Hey, Linutifer. Have a look at your data here. Let's let's tweet vulnerabilities. That's what he said. Open the door, police! Stop. Not like that. That's what we've seen right now. This was full disclosure. This means that someone found a vulnerability and just published this completely right now. This can create really, really bad trouble for you, and it's really uh, dangerous for people whose data get uh, get published, and it's also not cool. I mean, in the in the hacker ethics says uh, use public data, protect private data. 
That's what we talk about today. So because we are looking at a responsible disclosure, which is the process, how to tell a software a software company that you found a vulnerability. So nothing, spe uh, nothing speaks again published uh, about the um, vulnerability af afterwards, but only when the, uh, when the company has closed the, uh, the vulnerability. Not everything that's spoken in the internet is really a data leak. Nevertheless, we really want to have a look at data leaks, which uh, is a special class of vulnerability where the data le um, leaks to the outlet. Also, we are looking at uh, apps and websites only uh, only uh, um, from uh, one uh, one company, um, like uh, like like Moodle. So, if you have, a, for example, have a, a educational app. Where everybody, uh, uh, where people could could uh, um, download a personal data of user, then this is exactly that um, uh, from from uh, everyone here. So, uh, so if you have any questions or uh, uh, any kind of reports, uh, just talk uh, uh, talk with Linux. Just write to the disclosure at linux.de. All right, I just said that. All right, uh, back to our subject, the data. Uh, before you uh, run into any direction, you should first think, how bad is this uh, security vulnerability? Because on this, it will depend what you should do and how quickly you should do it. Because, of course, every security vulnerability should be reported, but also not every vulnerability is equally bad. So we will look into how you can estimate how bad it really is. Um, and we will look into what kind of vulnerability is it, how many people are affected and what kind of data is affected. So first, what kind of vulnerability is it? Can you read the data? Can you change data? Can you even delete the data? And in our example from the beginning, only the first one was possible, which is bad enough because we can get a list of all the names, addresses. Uh, I don't know what other kind of data is in there. We can download all this, but we cannot change the list. We can't give everyone the first name Carl. Also, we can't delete the list because that is important uh, because it's part of security that data doesn't just vanish. If it's about personal data, then the last two points of changing, deleting data are really unfortunate. But it is uh, bad enough if the confidentiality of data is lost. Um, if people are able to read data who are not supposed to be able to. And we had enough of these data leaks this year. We noticed this in many current test centers in some, um, and even in some educational platforms. And in every case, we could access the data of many, many thousands of people. An example, uh, some time ago, we found a security vulnerability in a current test center in uh, Berlin. And they had this nice uh, system where you could register online for your test and then get the result online as well. So we did a test ourselves and then looked at the results uh, at the system. And we found an API where you could get a list of all the people registered in the system and through another interface, even the test results. And these were almost 700,000 tests with all the data, name, address, email address, telephone number, personal identification card number, and the test result. 400,000 people were affected, but in this case it was even worse because we could not only read all the tests of the system, but we could also create new ones and save the results of the new test. So we could create for arbitrary people the result that they had made a negative PCR test um, despite them not having entered a test center. So we tried this for Robert Koch, born 1843, and the test was fortunately negative because with 180 years a corona infection would be very dangerous. So like this we could read foreign data and also write new data into the system and you might imagine we can also delete data from the system, which is a catastrophe from the IT security and also um, health, public health standpoint. And after you know this, you have to continue estimating how many people are affected and what kind of data of these people is going around. Because uh, vulnerability with many affected people is worse than with few affected people. If a lot of people are affected, then we're at the worst uh, alarm level already. But it's not that simple because if it's about very, very personal data, then already few affected people are a big security leak. And there are some examples of especially bad data in the general data protection law. Uh, corona test results would fall under 
health, uh, results, uh, sexual orientation, uh, union membership, some other things. And so if it's about especially sensible data, then we're at the dark, dark, dark red emergency level. And this is the point where we should start writing down everything that we found out. All right. Once upon a time in a software Wait, Carl, a report. It's not supposed to be a novel. All right, let's go back a step. Let's imagine we have found a relevant security leak. And we know, by, according to the criteria just now, how bad it is. And now we want to um, tackle this responsible disclosure um, procedure and report the vulnerability. And to be honest, we've done this a few times now, but it still starts uh, some adrenaline, which is natural. Um, you have probably just seen the data of other people which you're not supposed to have been able to see. And so the uh, heart rate will go up a bit, of course. And the most important thing in this situation is to stay calm, to check again, have I really just found this security vulnerability? Have I really seen the data of other people that I'm not supposed to be able to see? I know, just check again. It sounds easier than it is. And it's very important to never, that's already in the hacker ethics, uh, don't look at the data of other people. So if possible, um, create a second account or ask friends if you can use their accounts. If you think you might be able to delete or change data that you should be, shouldn't be able to, then of course, don't do this with the data of other people. If it's really the way that you suspected, then uh, start writing. You start documenting the vulnerability for several different target groups because this document will pass through several hands. It will, first of all, go to a group of people who will just read the first few sentences but are then responsible for forwarding the document to everyone who will understand the rest of what you wrote. So that is why the first sentences should be understandable for everyone that you found and the f most important fact should be in there already, which includes how many people are affected by the vulnerability and what kind of data of these people is affected. And try to avoid here using technical detail details. Those can go later in the report. And if you are going to send the report to official places such as that CERT, uh, then it is also makes a lot of sense to describe what kind of service or product it is, because then those places can uh, decide how important the vulnerability is. So, uh, so uh, in our example, I, I've I found that the API of the Chaos Cat community um, um, in certain end point, end point. So, in the uh, membership app of the Cat, 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 Cat community, the data of all members can be found. So, around this is name, address, um, um, payment status, and vaccination status. And the rest, it, it's a, a, you're writing for a technical uh, um, target group. So uh, so they know what an API is. Be, be precise, don't write a master thesis, a bachelor thesis, no novel, just a good good um, uh, documentation. Screenshots can help to uh, to make this, uh, uh, to um, really describe this problem in a way. Describe what the vulnerability is in our example. So for example, would be, um, I found the API of the Chaos Cat Community member app and found that via the API endpoint slash member slash ID, I could enumerate the uh, membership ID, personal data of all members. A pro pro profile could look like follows. Second. All right, the impact next. Uh, but using this vulnerability, I have access to the complete member database of the TSK community. I can see the name, address, birth date, payment status, and that they are a member. And this is important so that the other side can quickly comprehend how bad this vulnerability is, and then the um, official places can uh, try to decide if they need to impose sanctions or something. Next point is um, how to reproduce the vulnerability. If you have a short script, then you can insert it there. Otherwise, describe in clear steps what you need to do. For instance, number one, become a member of the CAS com cat community. Cats are always great. Number two, uh, register in the app and then memorize the login code. Number three, open this URL. Number four, 
you can see the profile of Catsy Cat in the Cat Face. And sometimes you can also give good tips how to solve the vulnerability. If you have this, then you can add it to the report as well, but you don't have to because that's the job of the company and not your own. And once you have all the information for your report, then the um, company has to learn about it. And there are, again, several options for this. Phone rings. Hack, hack, hack and hack. Uh, Bunny here. We build the banks for your data. How can I help you? Hi, here's Carl from Zerforschung. Do you know why I call? Do you uh, want to uh, give an order or do you want to, is it a return? So in our CRM, I uh, buy a CRF uh, with missing authentication, full access of the PPI of your users. We have MDF, HDF, plywood and solid wood. Not, we don't have anything else. Okay, so you got me wrong here. So I found a vulnerability at you, where, uh, you through which I can access the data of all your customers. Do you have five minutes for me? That bad. What do we do now? Uh, yes, so I want to chat with you. Uh, who to report this or how can I, uh, I report this so we can fix this quickly? That uh, someone someone built this for us. So if you can uh, stay uh, stay in line, I can uh, try to find the contact uh, for you to call. Ah, that's perfect. Okay, thank you. See you. So in many situations, it's probably the simplest go via the vulnerability report form of the BSI. It's also possible to do this in an anonymous way. So you find this under this URL here. So if you fill this in, you're sending the, you're sending the vulnerability report directly to the federal cert. So this is a team at the federal uh, federal office for security in uh, in IT. Their main job is making sure that the infrastructure of uh, federal uh, administration is secure. Uh, so that's why they have the point of con uh, they are the point of contact if you find any uh, security problems in the infrastructure of of the uh, of the state of Germany. But they also um, uh, connect you with um, uh, security researchers and companies. So take your report. And and check this within a few hours and then talk to the uh, corresponding companies. This makes it easier for us because you don't have to directly contact the uh, the company themselves, except if you want to do that. And if the BSI write, write to a company, they are they typically pretty um, quick in fixing the hole because otherwise they're getting a letter with a uh, very, uh, very important um, uh, letterhead. So, so um, and they also don't want uh, want the, uh, the the BSI to uh, to write a public report, a public warning of the uh, about the uh, of the software of this company. But what you always should keep in mind, the BSI is uh, is a security agency like police and intelligence agencies, and reports to the Ministry of Interior. The federal third works slightly different than police or security agencies, but in our in our perspective, pretty independent. But always. Uh, um, uh, think clearly what you tell them or what you don't. So, for example, if you report a, a vulnerability that's suitable for a stage a Trojan, like Heartbleed or Lockshell, we wouldn't tell them. So, what, what we want is to make the BSI to make a really independent agency and uh, cancel the hacker, uh, hacker law. So, so, there are a couple of things you should also keep in mind when, in your report. Report everything. Do not uh, keep any, any knowledge back. And also, do not make any demands. Don't ask about money, don't ask about t-shirts, chocolates or presents, nothing. You, you, you don't uh, don't demand anything and report everything. Uh, and the other way around, you need to be careful that no uh, no demands are made towards you. For example, NDAs, which or anything else you need to sign. So what happens quite often by ad bug bounties, for example. So so if if you check if you if you, if you um, understand or not, you're you're going into a contract that uh, prevents you from talking about this vulnerability or having another look at these systems again. So no demands from you and don't accept any demands and definitely not any NDAs. 
So also we made this kind of mistakes uh, before. So and we are pretty unhappy about that. So we didn't have much uh, much experience back then, and we reported a, a vulnerability via the official bug bounty program of the company. And what we didn't thought about that is that there was an NDA there, so we we are still not allowed to talk uh, talk about uh, about this at all. And this is exactly what the companies want to uh, achieve with these kind of uh, NDAs: control the negative narrative, uh, um, make sure you don't talk about this uh, vulnerabilities. And this is a problem because as a society, we need to be able to uh, talk about security uh, problems in software, because this is the only way on how to, as a society, find new regulations, find new measures to avoid those. Also, never try to, um, uh, to sell any consulting to these companies. Also, if they uh, offer offer you to pay as a consultant, um, just tell just tell uh, um, them no. The risk is way too way too high that they use this against us uh, against you later on. So if you're not sure whether your fraud is fine, and then better talk to, talk with someone who has more experience uh, uh, experience there. So, for example, Linus can do this. Hey, I can do this. Just write at disclosure at ccc.de. Yes, Linus can that. Can do that. And there's nothing we we should be ashamed of. We did this very often. And instead of Linux, instead of Linux, you can also ask hello at zerforschung.org. We also are happy to to help you out there. Hey, that's what I said uh, as well. Machen, da muss ich das nicht alles machen. Sie machen das bestimmt auch sehr gerne. Hey Linus, das hat doch ich gerade schon gesagt. You also be very, be very quick in reporting a security gap. So uh, don't ha don't ha uh, haste so much. But but for example, if you find some uh, some vulnerability, then try it out whether it works. And for weeks again, don't write any report because if the company finds this vulnerability from, on their own and look at their logs and see that you uh, that you exploited that vulnerability and didn't tell them then they will consider you you're to be malicious there and getting out of that and prove your uh, your good intentions that's pretty compli can be pretty complicated so please report the report from yourself as soon as you thought about everything and uh, wrote it down this also means that write everything into report what you know because if you uh, uh, if you uh, don't uh, if you keep some information back it may look like that you're doing this on purpose in a, with a malicious intent so what a really really bad idea is ask for money uh, to report everything it's because this looks like blackmailing and this can have bad, bad results. So please do not do that. What also may happen with companies and with uh, agencies is if you auto generate automated reports with a vulnerability scanner and then directly send them to them. Don't get this wrong. Search scanners can be very helpful to get uh, some hints on or clues about a hold, but you are back at the beginning. So jump begin to, uh, to jump back to the beginning of the talk and uh, um, have a look at the videos. So this look, sounds like a lot of fun, and it is, but be very careful in thinking a lot about each step because there's a lot that can go wrong because if you found a, a, a hole here a security gap here you are implicitly saying that you exploited that one i mean there's no way around that but in germany this can be a felony here according to the hacker paragraph 202 uh, 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 panel code which uh, which makes it illegal to get access to uh, especially uh, uh, protected data it sounds it sounds reasonable but the corresponding paragraph is not very clear and, uh, and dangerous there. Even the CDU who taught this law here doesn't in, uh, really understand this paragraph here. So uh, they they try to sue a little bit after reporting a after she reported a security hole to the CDO. So the uh, uh, the prosecutor said the data were protected so badly that this wasn't uh, even um, um, uh, prosecutable. So. Um, Security research. So, so it's a really bad idea for a company to sue, uh, to sue security researchers. Only very difficult people, uh, um, uh, people are trying to do this. We we didn't meet many of those, but they are out there. So we really hope really hope that this paragraph gets get abandoned. So many security researchers uh, um, will put this down in an open letter. So really think about on whether you uh, whether 
you report your identity because reporting all this uh, uh, can be done pseudonymously or anonymously. Um, remember, in internet you are not anonymous. Protect from the very beginning because if you found something, then your IP address was already locked and it's too late to look for anonymity. So Linus and Thorsten made a very good talk with the title, you can hack everything, you just don't get caught. Oh, yes. Oh, with Thorsten, Thorsten I, I had a talk recently about the t with the title, you can hack everything, you're just not allowed to uh, just to try not to get caught. So, then if you communicate with the company, be very, very careful. Don't hold any relevant information back. Also, be careful uh, not to um, uh, um, not to put you in a bad light, and do not report, uh, expect that the company is uh, is th thankful to you. Right at the beginning, companies are very much in a shock and don't really know uh, what happens. So they're not allowed to threaten or sue. But right in, in the beginning, they might be very unfriendly. And as said, be extremely careful. Never do anything that could look or could taken as a threat or blackmail. In general, we recommend um, to keep your flat or your house in a way uh, that um, uh, that it's uh, that's ready, ready for search by two leads. It's really uh, bad that this is necessary, but well, uh, then again, um, police um, may have a look at it for other reasons as well. So there was a talk, you, uh, you have the right to be silent from Udo Fetter at Media TC, for example. So it's a for example, with a lot of explan explanations there. So, um, since we are talking about uh, about protecting yourself, not about your own uh, your own IT, be careful, because if you found a vulnerability and it can be really really uh, stressful, this this report can be very uh, um, can cost you a lot of nerves, a lot of sleep. So, um, check your health. Uh, uh, do self care. Uh, find, try to find allies, friends, people you can talk with, you trust, and um, who can tell you if you uh, if you're going too deep here, tell you to to stop, tell you to go around for a walk. And this. So for for for, for us, the fortune is exactly this a very a a, a wet heart here. So um, we managed we managed to achieve a lot this year, more than everybody from us, and we had a lot of fun there. And so during this pandemic, until now at least, it was uh, easier to bear here. For us, it's clear, without this collective, we wouldn't have been able to manage all of that, not even uh, from uh, 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 in the time. So more and also more hats think better than just one. So the collective gave us lots of different uh, uh, perspective. This is really, really uh, 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 helpful and really, really nice. Uh, of course, it can happen that we are not in the right mood. Uh, for instance, if we're on Tuesday evening at quarter to midnight, we're sitting together and we notice, hey, this text has to be done until tomorrow, and the threads for social media have to be there, and someone has to create the title image for the blog post, and someone at the end can manage to create everything, and then it's nice to see the result at the end. So find your friends, uh, create a pack, and then report these security vulnerabilities together. All right, let's assume you've done everything correctly, and you've, let's check what happens afterwards. 22, 24. Oh. HK, we built the banks for your data. How can I help you? Now we don't have a data pipe. We have a normal uh, pipe and a sync pipe. Data pipe? What? Is this some kind of disease? What? What do you mean, customer data? Oh yeah. What? Nah. Hey. Nah. I, I'll call. I'll, I'll call the police. But you can't do that. Hello, police. There's an emergency. Do you have a cyber police or something? I've just got a call. Someone said something with data, data leak, and they had all my customers' data. No, I don't know who it was. They said a name, I don't remember what it was. Some kind of Fonds of some kind of noble name. No. All right, I'll hold.
All right, dear companies, let's look at you. Your tasks are very simply to, simple to explain. Be kind and open um, to the reporter, close the leak and don't even think about suing us. Uh, all right, we can maybe say a bit more. First of all, um, you are communicating in a responsible disclosure process, uh, usually with a person or a team who do this in their free time, so really treat them well. But, of course, really your task talk begins a lot earlier before you have the hackers on the phone. Your first step is to be reachable as a company, because mistakes can always happen, but if you find someone outside of your organization, uh, or someone outside of your organization finds them, they should be able to report them. And the most important thing that researchers will ask themselves is how can we even reach you? And the most important the conventional solution here is that you have a special email address such as security at your domain. And it is also um, useful if this address is read and regularly checked by multiple people because it's not useful if you get an email and then the responsible person is on vacation or just checks it once a month anyways. And these emails should be read directly by technically competent personnel so that everything can go smoothly. And you should also look into the, into the spam folder because sometimes hackers um, use their own mail servers and those emails might not end up in their inbox, especially with Google and Apple. And this reachability might sound trivial, but we often notice that we are not able to reach the right person for these vulnerability reports. And that means we will write to everyone we can find uh, in the uh, wherever on the website. And this is for you as a company not ideal because then this report is going to reach a lot of different people usually and they might not be specialized for security reports and they can't really estimate how bad it is. And then there will be a lot of panic who nobody knows what to do and anything might happen. The message might be ignored or in the worst case it might be read by the wrong people in the uh, C suit and then be escalated to the wrong people. So that's why a separate address makes a lot of sense. And if there's a report there, you should report quickly and send an acknowledgement of received very quickly. And then we know that you have received the message and we don't need to continue trying to reach you because if we at Zephosh don't reach you by email, then we will keep trying through other means. We might write you on WhatsApp, we might slide into your DMs, we might write you a fax, we might call your investors or even your parents if that's not the same thing. So this might sound a bit weird but we have done all of these things because we want to make 100% sure that you know about the issue and will resolve it as quickly as possible. And this is why the security mail address should be easy to find, such as in the um, legal information about your website or even the security.txt, which is a standard on how to publish the security information for your website. And this can contain the ways to reach you, the preferred language for communication, crypto keys, any Thing, and you make your work a lot easier for us this way. All right, now you've received a report and the next step is to check if you can follow the description of the report. And if you can, then you should confirm this to the researchers. And this is important because otherwise we will just keep annoying you and this will cost time to us and you. And you should also directly explain what will happen next until the report, the vulnerability is closed. And it will be interesting for us what are you doing immediately and as well as what uh, longer term consequences you're doing, such as uh, Dear Hacker Collective Zephoshin, we have been able to reproduce the vulnerability that you described and directly took the affected service offline. We have now uh, closed the leak and are checking the Dean's thir the service thoroughly again. Thank you for the responsible disclosure uh, procedure. And if you can't reproduce the issue, then uh, check back if you understood everything correctly and don't just directly claim that the leak doesn't exist because you um, want to keep the person that you're talking with up to date and don't want to have any misunderstandings in the conf in the conf uh, communication so prefer sending too much updates rather than too little 
So regularly write back, for instance, every week, check back how far are you uh, with uh, fixing the leak and communicate clearly here. If there's a move in the timeline, if it's a delay, then you should uh, name that explicitly as well, because you want the security researchers to be honest and transparent. So you should also be honest and transparent. Um, put everything on the table and don't hold anything back. It is also important because uh, security researchers will want to write something about the leaks. Uh, so we write blog posts, for instance, describing how we found the leak and what the effects were, which means that everyone can learn something from these cases and these leaks will hopefully get less common. If you're talking to security research, uh, researchers, uh, be honest, be friendly, be thankful to the reporters, and keep in mind that people are helping you in their free time to keep your software up safe, and this is great. And it, of course, it's not nice if uh, great security vulnerability in your software is found, but that's not the fault of the uh, researchers. They found the vulnerability, they didn't create it, so don't shoot the messengers. So imagine how bad it feels for the opponent. Uh, so they looked at your software in their free time and they found a problem and they, they even told you about and you're just sending back abuse, insults or even threatening to sue. And that is how you scare away uh, potential security researchers, which is the worst case for your uh, security because the vulnerabilities aren't gone now. They just will not be reported to you. Uh, they might be fully disclosed immediately or even sold to criminals. And the CDU, the German party, had to learn this the hard way um, after they sent this um, if they threatened to sue, there was a huge outcry and they were told that nobody would report vulnerabilities to them anymore. This is, of course, a dramatic case. We cannot recommend anyone to report vulnerabilities in CDU apps again. And we will not do this again. And we are hoping that they will, um, that we wish the CDU good luck and that they will be able to find all their vulnerabilities themselves and nobody else. Instead, some further vulnerabilities were found in CDU software and immediately published. So watch out that you um, don't write anything that could be taken as a threat. And it is obvious that you should not force the people to sign anything, no NDA, no consulting uh, contracts, don't even try it. Of course, security researchers are often happy if you are um, paying back in some friendly way, but always um, agree to this first. Don't, don't just send money or presents, always ask if it's actually desired. And especially important, uh, do it to be honestly thankful. It is not an opportunity to, for a cool uh, press release and don't um, put conditions on it. This uh, also means don't just be thankful publicly. Not every person would, wants to be uh, named on your social media uh, channels, such as we don't want to be named on the uh, Armed Forces website, or someone doesn't want to deal with the vulnerability anymore. It could be stress at work. People just maybe don't want it, and you have to accept it. So, uh, so, so it turned out well, not directly in, in the communication with uh, security researchers, but also in the uh, communication with everyone else to be open and uh, honest. So, uh, so don't keep anything back. Don't uh, um, um, so so be transparent. What happened and what to do that. So it can, can happen that journalists want to report about this uh, incident with you. Don't try to lie to them or don't try to discredit uh, um, the security researchers. Usually this uh, this backfires. So it also it's a, a never good idea to uh, to uh, make a press release without talking to these researchers. So we also want to uh, want to encourage you to. Always uh, inform your users about this in, about incident. This is a part of a trans a transparent way of handle any vulnerabilities. So, so what we have explained in the last couple of minutes are just the uh, the main ba the basics. If you really had a good process with your with security incidents, there's a lot else you can do. There's a lot of literature there, much more that fits into this talk here. So some link about um, about further information about things is in the show notes under rc3. Forschung.org. So, so this now, and happy hacking to everyone, and see everyone.
The worst are the are the uh, the the orders by the this weird uh, people from Berlin. So camera, is the camera running? So they they're really really annoying those people from Berlin. So special colors here. This here smart banks, gloom. Uh, so bad stuff. The good thing, so the good thing is you just take your old pallets and uh, and sell them, and they are so stupid they even have 500 euros of sat. Even in their old loft there, they put this in it. It's in. It's the uh, the latest thing. They they can just sell uh, sell every garbage to them. So and with these words, we are back live on the exciting stage. And uh, first of all, something uh, when organization. Uh, um, point of view, so we'll have a short uh, Q&A, so you can ask any questions uh, uh, on Twitter, hashtag RCXAIN, or on IRC in the uh, channel RC3-XAIN. And again, so there are going to be um, show notes and the script of of the whole uh, movie we just showed under rc3.zerforschung.org. And if you want to watch more cringe from us, just follow us on Twitter, or TikTok, or Instagram. So I have to move, move to the Q&A part, and there's the first question. So may, do you make a difference between real security vulnerabilities, like a uh, lack of authentication, or um, uh, open barn doors, like an API with a no barn door? So first of all, you are more, uh, the, these barn doors are more annoying, but we have a certain process, and it doesn't make any difference with that one at all. Also, what we I need to uh, add here is that certain kind uh, things about the information disclosure, which happens quite often, and someone says, "Oh, we switched debugging on," and uh, this usually allows us to find further vulnerabilities there. So. Um, it also makes a role in in uh, in vulnerabilities, and so you usually don't really report this tiny stuff here if they don't have any uh, immediate danger. But uh, what I mean, as you saw in the talk here, so our main intention is finding data leaks, data leaking out. This doesn't mean that there are not many many other kind of vulnerabilities, but the the one we are looking uh, for are data leaks, data leaking to the outside, data being available to the outside, and that. That's our main focus for our own reports here. Less about how this happened, but more what what actually what the actual input of, of that one. Innovation of API or more, more complex. So it also is, atta um, um, is attached to that. So we have seen um, companies defending themselves by well, I mean it's open open for two ways or one month. I mean, and we we uh, we you also answer. It's it's nice that it's open for only uh, so short, but once the data has leaked and uh, which. Can, might only take just a few seconds, then the bad thing already happened. The other question, so uh, um, next question, what is a good uh, time span between a report and the publication? So the a general rule is 90 days, is a kind of industry standard by now, but in this particular case, if cust uh, personal data is, uh, is involved here, we we don't say has to gun in three months. That's not what we do. I think that in, it depends on each case, on 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 the urgency there, and how urgent is is. And the general answer is uh, the it's uh, um, the answer we want to we want to have is uh, we want to get get things fixed faster than we will be able to report that. So, so we don't really say it needs to be done in a few minutes, but we can really only publish if it's fixed, because otherwise the publication would allow other people to get access to that data, illegal access to that data. And so this is the, why this uh, why uh, PII of private data is um, some special case here. So the most important thing for us is. Once we have done the uh, report, we want to get uh, feedback for, uh, uh, answer from the company within 48 hours. Typically, it's faster. And then it depends on the actual case and the company. But it 
the first feedback should be very, very quick. But also, you should give the companies the chance to to react in a meaningful way. So, 12 hours is typically a very sh uh, way too short time. <laughs> so, so, if you are talking to a company, next question: uh, What happens if? Though just uh, play, uh, try to play everything down, or uh, especially when they talk to to journalists. So you have a lot of experience with um, uh, with journalists. So this always happens. I've never actually um, 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 seen once that uh, that the company didn't try to play this down. It was just short moment, like two months, just two months. The API was open, or a sm small part. There was some access to only a small part of our customer base. So we, everything was able, but the uh, Sephardian only uh, downloaded 23 uh, data sets of them, so we don't have to report that. So playing, the, playing things down, and in that form, we always see this. I mean, it's understandable, uh, because they, they want to um, calm their, their customer base uh, in that, kind of okay, but What's really a bad thing is if people negate that, if companies negate that, or if they attack the researchers. So if they say everything is controlled, there's nothing to see here, that, that, that's understandable, you shouldn't hold it to them. But if they getting personal, if they try to try uh, to attack you, if they say that the, the, um, um, the timeline was way too short, that's a bad thing. Okay, so for us, it uh, it um, um, it was important to find a professional media partner for the for the report about the security um, because we want to make sure that our side of the story, our part of the uh, the story, uh, would be reported in a in a good uh, in a good way. So the uh, so even in the worst case, if the company sues you, you have some some ally, some partner on the on the side, but we don't really have a, a good way. For our, for our thing is, uh, we just want to find, find a good way for us here. So, since you're, talk yeah. since you're talking about partners, you were already talking about the data protection agencies. And what are your experiences with uh, data protection agencies? If you're reporting something there, are they competent? Do they do enough? <laughs> they uh, have limited possibilities in Germany. So the data protection agency can't do everything. They can't just say with the very first validation, we are doing going to do a huge fee. They are limited and there's a lot of pressure on them from, the, from politics and from the economy. So they have limited opportunities, but on the professional level, the work together with them is always working great. We have a great relationship with them. They're always nice. They're happy to hear from us. Uh, sometimes we help them to uh, follow along, and then the process is starting there. But legally, the data protection agency cannot always uh, inform you there. So you might just report something, and then later there comes a press report. Very rarely. Um, it help, It happens that the uh, uh, company will get a fee, um, but it's unfortunately fairly rare. Um, to add something there, I think I hear a light misunderstanding from the question. There's IT security and there's data protection, and data protection is just a legal uh, concept. Just because you have a vulnerability, it doesn't mean necessarily that you have a violation of data protection. Uh, with, this would happen if you report it too late, if you don't inform people, or if it becomes clear that you have data on the server which isn't supposed to be there after um, a certain period of time. So this is the legal concept of data protection, and then they can do something immediately, but with a security vulnerability, um, it happens a lot. So um, I think it also makes sense that not every company that has a vulnerability immediately has data protection problems, but uh, from the legal perspective, but I think it still makes a lot of sense because then it's already on the books and then or on file. And then next time it happens, then the data protection legal perspective can uh, take a close look at it as well. And 
uh, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that the vulnerability is closed. And as long as there aren't any indications that the data was actually stolen or that there was um, anything done especially poorly, then the data protection agencies don't do all that much with the first incidents. And I would say that's okay that way. Uh, we as the Forschung would uh, like for them to be a bit more proactive for the agencies. And we sometimes hear this from the data protection uh, people as well, that the agencies want to do more and they want to go to the companies directly. And what a lot of the things that we found aren't uh, NSO type vulnerabilities that are totally incomprehensible. It's often fairly easy to find stuff, but they don't have enough resources. Uh, so if there's less than a handful of people responsible for health data in Berlin, then they can't check all their corona test centers, which is why we also demand that they are better equipped with the po possibilities that legally they already have. And I think also in the um, area of medicine or with this CDU Connect app, the um, person isn't going to say that there isn't all right. Although I think uh, this app wasn't actually was actually a data protection problem, right? Yes, because it co um, collected political um, orientation of people, and this is especially protected data according to the general data protection regulation. And so this is relevant to data protection laws. So this is the kind of data I would say any data under Article Nine should be protected, especially, and then the data protection agencies should be able to check, especially. All right, and then I think because before we start talking more about data protection agencies, but, um, don't be sad if there's a million dollar fee or million euro fee. All right, and what we've noticed is we uh, start talking to the companies and then they might learn something. And especially if it's larger problems, then the data protection agency might go to the company and then have the effect that they uh, close down. So data protection can be a good tool, but don't expect that you will immediately see the consequences. The next question is a legal question, which I think we cannot answer on the legal level, but I think it's still an interesting question. If you have found the problem, can you uh, forward it to more competent people? Is it okay? I would take it away from the legal and more to the moral level. Is it okay to go to the CCC and say, okay, there's this problem here, I have found it, how can we solve this properly? And I always forget, there is this, um, if there's some kind of data there, there is this paragraph. Um, so all of us aren't lawyers, um, but there is this paragraph where the first person who learns about something is uh, free of any um, penalty, but each other person might be penalized, but we're not talking about um, being liable juristically, but maybe to answer the question a bit carefully, that's not the most important thing. We can't say that it's always wrong to tell another person, but if uh, talking to another person in this case means Twitter, tweet it uh, to a lot of thousands of people, then that's a problem, of course. If we're saying, uh, so uh, if you're emailing this closure at CCCDE, we see this very often there. Uh, someone says, we've, I've just found this. And my answer is, okay, you have to describe it completely so we can follow along and we can judge the impact. If you're just writing this, then I can't do anything about it and I won't report it either. So this means, of course, that I have to be told the complete vulnerability and I will check it as well. And if I were to do any mischief with that, then it would be bad for me, of course, and for the person who told me as well. So I think that the question is answered by asking, do you trust the person to work based on the same ethical standards as you? And then if you're a unit, more or less, then I wouldn't see this as juristically very uh, risky. Uh, one more note here at the Forschung. We've found when working with the data protection agencies that we've reported a vulnerability and then told the um, agency that there was 
Or they say that no data was uh, taken away because self forging is trustworthy, which is, of course, funny because we have found this vulnerability and nobody knows if the data was taken off uh, before we found the vulnerability or anything. But in the uh, practice of data protection from the if we are not talking about the legal perspective, we have already seen that um, security researchers are trusted already to such an extent that people don't consider this very problematic. But you have to be very careful there. I think this um, amount of trust, not everyone gets that much trust with their first report. So as we said, um, try to get help and find more competent or more experienced people and ask them, such as Linus or us, if you want to. And I think this is a legal question, so we can just add our legal disclaimer, which means this hacker paragraph has to be abolished, at least in its current form. It has to be formally in such a way that security research uh, is possible legally, and you don't have to be afraid that the police is in front of the door or you get uh, sued. And I'll maybe add, um, I'm not aware of any case where someone was actually uh, sentenced who shouldn't have been sentenced to something uh, in court. But about these um, being sued is annoying because they take away your computers, you have a lot of troubles, you have to pay lawyers, uh, pay all these legal stuff. And this is uh, totally annoying uh, when they come into your apartment if you haven't invited them. And that is why even if it doesn't lead to a sentence against you, it uh, is just terribly annoying. And that is why it's useful, where it makes sense um, to work with the CCC together or as the CCC, because I think that it has um, word has spread that um, sending the police to the CCC is difficult. Okay, so I think we answered this question. Um, um, yeah. So here's the question on whether we know of any cases where the data uh, data protection agencies um, 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 got uh, put any penalties on on the companies. So, as the forschung, we, we don't know of any case, but there are also many other cases where we don't know the result of that, because if you put a, uh, a result in, so if you are an affected uh, individual individual of that one, so you have a way to, uh, you have a the right to get information about that. But if we do this as collective, as a juristic person, we don't, we do not have the right to get this information that. And so they are not, uh, the, the, the agency are not, are not even allowed to um, uh, to stand this about, so there's some um, so, some way to uh, so the the best way is to do, uh, to create IFG um, requests here, and so we did this uh, previously. So in the case where the company where the, we uh, um, didn't uh, do that, we published the phone number in our plot in a plot. Uh, so people tried to call that. Affected users tried to call this company there, and they reached the CEO while he was washing his cow. Actually, so I think these were all uh, questions that we had in the past. So. So let's wrap this up here. Thank you very much, uh, Linus, that you were here and did this with us. So I really, really enjoyed that one here. So thank you so much. I really, I would love to, to, uh, to having uh, pre-produced stuff in uh, in RC3, and th uh, it was really great how he did this.